Aloha everyone. Welcome and mahalo for joining us today. My name is Beth Iwacha and I'm the Director of Development at Historic Hawaii Foundation. Uh, we're excited to have this opportunity to share with you some of the photographs of uh, journalist and community activist Nancy Bannock and to highlight why her work is important. Um, seems like there's still some people logging in. Um, so we'll wait a little bit, um, but just to go over some of the housekeeping, um, we will have a panel discussion at the conclusion of the program. So please enter any questions in the chat um, throughout, the, throughout the presentation and we will um, try to answer all of the questions at the end. Okay, well, I think it's time to get started. Um, again, my name is Bethy Wacha, and I'm the Director of Development at Historic Hawaii Foundation. Um, we're very pleased to have this opportunity today to share this Bannock, Nancy Bannock collection with you and um, let you know about um, the partnership that enabled this project to um, take place. Um, joining us are Presenters as joining us as presenters are architectural historian Don Hibbert, filmmaker Robin Lung, and Hawaii State Archivist Dr. Adam Jansen. Thank you all for supporting us on this project. Before we begin, we'd like to give a special thank you to Stacy Hoshino, the grant manager of the Hawaii Council for the Humanities, for his support. We're also grateful to Clara Herr, Connie Kwan, and Kenneth Guillen for the time and dedication they gave to cleaning and preserving the slides in this collection, as well as to Adam Jansen and Alice Tran for their leadership and collaboration. Just to note that today's presentation is being recorded and also live streamed on the HHF YouTube and Facebook pages where they may be viewed and shared afterwards. Please type your questions in the chat box on the Zoom menu bar as they arise. Our speakers will respond to them during the Q&A portion at the end and do their best to address as many as they can. Sorry, I've been forgetting to forward my slides. <laughs> um, so now I'd like to provide some historic context. Nancy Bannock is remembered as a fierce advocate for preserving Hawaii's culture and historic buildings and places. She served as the Hawaii editor for Sunset Magazine from 1952 to 1974 and traveled the islands taking photographs of peoples, places, and events with a particular focus on historic, cultural, and natural resources. While her photographs and editorials for Sunset tended to portray an idealized view of the islands, her later work focused on capturing images of everyday life and the places that make Hawaii special. Documenting buildings and places took on even more significance for Nancy as she witnessed the passing of an era. Hawaii experienced tremendous change in the post-war period due to population growth and its economic transformation from agriculture to tourism. Investment poured into new housing, hotels, and infrastructure. Older neighborhoods were replaced by apartments and high rises. In response, Nancy became an activist for preserving places. Although her brusque manner may have put her at odds with some, her friends knew how deeply she cared about preserving the old Hawaii. Over her lifetime, Bannock donated hundreds of photos and manuscripts to the Hawaii State Archives. After she passed away in 2008, Historic Hawaii Foundation received over 5,500 slides and photographs from her estate. With grant support from the Hawaii Council for the Humanities, the foundation partnered with the state archives to preserve the collection as a public resource. Student interns from UH Manoa have helped clean and scan thousands of images for what has turned out to be one of the 
more demanding projects at the archives. More on that later. Um, our first speaker, architectural historian, Don Hibbard, worked for 24 years in the Hawaii State Historic Preservation Office, first as an architectural historian and then as division administrator and deputy officer. He is recognized as an authority on Hawaii's built environment and has taught courses as well as authored a number of books on the subject. For the past 20 years, Don has provided heritage specialist services for architectural firms, governmental agencies, and individuals in Hawaii. Welcome, Don. Professionally, Nancy Bannock was a long-term editor of Sunset Magazine, but she also was a photographer who was really relentless, tireless in her pursuit of capturing those historic places that really represented what Hawaii was. She's best known for her works preserving Chinatown and Kapiolani Park and the Natatorium. She was very active, not just in historic preservation, but also in communities. Uh, she was a huge supporter of, of Hawaii Public Radio, Kapiolani Park, the Honolulu Academy of Arts, the Hawaii Arts Alliance. And so she was able to take that energy and really inspire generations of people. She did this over, you know, 40, 50 years of her life. The collection itself is approximately 5,800 slides, and they seem to contain the time periods of, of the 1960s, 1970s, uh, and perhaps a little bit later. The partnership between HHF and the State Archives occurred in 2019 when they physically transferred all of those slides into our custody for preservation. And since then, we've been going through cleaning up and, and really analyzing what's there and what's it going to take to get them from a physical into a digital format to make them much more widely accessible. To know that these will be preserved in a different format, but preserved and people will be able to see these. Um, it means the world to me. As I'm cleaning these slides and digitizing them, a lot of them have deteriorated quite a bit and it's disconcerting. It's, it's, there's nothing I can do to stop the process. Even if I put it in cold storage or just, it's going to deteriorate. Of all the material we received from her, slides by far are the most difficult to preserve. And that is because of the nature of the chemistry of color slides, the color degrades at a much, much faster rate than just about any other photographic material. And we can see that through some of her early Big Island uh, Paniolo photos. They have gone from the beautiful lush green to almost completely red tone because the color has faded and shifted so, so dramatically on those color slides that we really, we have to address it now before we lose any more of that color material in it. It's sad because a lot of those slides, some of them, they're just cracking and it's just like, oh, <laughs> and there's nothing we can do. And I know for myself, Kenneth and Connie, when we see those damaged slides, we're so scared because we're like cleaning it, but we don't want to, you know, put more stress on the material. We're doing a great job. I think so far we're about a third of the way done. It's very labor intensive time intensive. I will scrutinize every single slide, every single capture. It's so aggravating because you'll find this one little like dust speck and it's just like you know it can be better and you know that wasn't originally there. And for us we don't do enhancements so we have to do it all over again but to see it being revived again makes me really happy and glad that we're able to 
keep the legacy of Nancy Vanek alive through her photographs. I am very inspired by her work. She captured a lot of Hawaii during my favorite time period, which is like mid-century Hawaii. That time period in Hawaii was very inspirational because that's when a lot of buildings started popping up. Seeing old images of North Shore and places I frequent a lot was really cool because you get to see like what has actually stuck and what has changed dramatically or what has been demolished and is no longer there. Sometimes we don't have things to like refer to, to our past, or, you know, we don't have anything like tangible sometimes. But to see an image, it's like super easy to like connect with. You can put yourself in that image and kind of gather context um, with what was happening during that time. My hope for the Nancy Bannock collection is for people to see them and fill in these gaps between past and present. What really kind of pulled on the heartstrings were just photos of everyday life kids, families, just smiling, playing. And I can't wait for people to see the, the collection because then they'll be like, oh, I, that's me, or you know, that's my auntie or something. As we digitize these photos, they're going to be deposited into our digital archives online so that the public will have complete free access to everything that we've done to this point. We're building components into the system itself so that we can help crowdsource better identification of some of these buildings, locations, and even individuals that are represented in the photos so that future generations will have much greater accessibility and discoverability of these immensely beautiful images. You're on mute, Beth. I hope you, everyone enjoyed that. Um, it was beautifully done, mahalo Robin. Robin Lung has been making documentaries about historic places and people for nearly 20 years. Her film, Finding Kukan, has been broadcast nationally and has received multiple awards at film festivals or across the country. Robin will join us later for the panel discussion. And next, um, we'd like to uh, welcome the state archivist, Dr. Adam Jansen, who has been so helpful and witty throughout this project. Adam was previously the digital archivist for the state of Washington and has extensive experience in records management, di digital technology, and ar archival strategies. The mission of the State Archives is to ensure open government by preserving and making accessible the historic records of state government and to partner with state agencies to manage their active and inactive records. Adam will show us how to access the collection on the Archives website. Aloha, Adam. 
Aloha, my kako, and, and thank you for this opportunity to share this really, truly amazing project. Um, I have to start off with thanking the Hawaii Council for the Humanities for making the funding possible. We could not have done this without the funding to bring in interns to handle what really proved to be a much larger task than we had thought. We originally were under the assumption we'd get through the entire project in the time allotted. Not only did we get halfway through and, and, and that was only because uh, Historic Hawaii Foundation found some more funding. So as you can tell from that, it was a much more intensive project than we had originally estimated. And really, I have to stress that Ho Historic Hawaii Foundation was far too modest when they said that uh, Nancy Bannock's estate donated the slides to them. The, the truth of the matter is, is much more uh, nuanced than that. Nancy herself had deposited what we guesstimate about 10 linear feet of photographs at the state archives during her lifetime. And after her passing, the, the estate had initially, my understanding is approached the state archives and say, here's all these slides that we found, uh, except my predecessor apparently understood the complexity a little better than I did and said, no, nope, we don't wanna handle slides. Uh, and very fortunately, Historic Hawaii Foundation rescued them. Uh, if they hadn't volunteered to take them, we wouldn't have them today. And, and so, you know, a huge uh, mahalo nui to them for doing that. Uh, because as you can see from the video, some of those slides really are, are starting to degrade. And it's been our experience now that of all the material that we've digitized, and that includes 40,000 photographs, approximately 7,000 glass plate negatives, half a million uh, historic paper documents all the way back to 1790. These 32, 3,300 slides are by far the most labor intensive project that we've undertaken to date. And so, you know, we learned a lot and, and hopefully when you see the full breadth and magnitude of what's been done, uh, you really appreciate all of the effort that's been put into it. Unquestionably, we think it was worth it, uh, but you know, it is very labor intensive. And so we will continue this project. We will continue to try and seek more funding because it is really worthy of being completed. Uh, so enough of me talking, let me jump into the screen share and share with you what it is that uh, we have accomplished to date. So I'm hoping that you're now looking at the Digital Archives website. Somebody give me a verbal yes, please. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So the address for this is digitalarchives.hawaii.gov. And when you go to this, you will see at the very top, we acknowledge that we are still in beta mode. Uh, we had originally planned to be through this mode by now, but because of the pandemic, rather than uh, really developing the UI, the user interface, to be more feature rich and better searching capabilities, we decided to shift effort to just getting as much content into it as possible. So because of that, we're, we're about a year behind in where we would like to be as far as making this a much richer, easier user experience. So please bear with us. You'll see that on the, the little header bar there. If you email us at archiveshawaii.gov, we welcome any suggestions, any comments, ways we can improve, things you liked, uh, because we do want to make this better. So to find Nancy's collection, the easiest way to do it is if you go to browse, these are all of the content creators. On page two, you'll find an entry for the Hawaii State Archives. If you click on that, you'll see that we have several different categories. What we're looking for is the manuscript collection because we want to see the Nancy Bannock manuscript collection. And then a couple of interesting things that are worthy of talking about in their own right, but we're gonna go to page two again. And you'll see that we have the Nancy Bannock Manuscript Collection, which we have a designation of M498. So if you open that up, uh, you're gonna get a little tip of the hat of some things to come. You'll see that we have multiple sub-series in here that we do have some plans this year to digitize more of her material and build upon the momentum that we have. But specifically what we're looking for is this, slides and negatives from the Historic Hawaii Foundation. And you'll see that there are 48 boxes worth of material 
that are within this designation. And a box can be anything from that small yellow Kodak slide box that holds you know, a dozen or so slides up to those big metal cases that you saw opened up. Now, a little bit about our organizational methodology. There's, a, there's an archival concept called respect the font, um, you know, respecting the original order. Nancy knew her materials far better than anybody else, except for maybe Don ever will. And so we did not want to disrupt her organizational methodology. So however she filed it, however she organized it, we kept that. So if it was a container of any size, we considered that to be a box. And then as you saw in the video, within some of those larger containers, there were those little tab dividers. So we considered those to be kind of the, the equivalency of a folder. So that was a subset within that box. And so we kept exactly all of those names that she ascribed to it, all of those dividers she put into it. And so as you look through here, you'll see at the reference level, 498 is her manuscript number, dot three are the slides from HHF, and then the dash tells you which box number it is. And, and again, tipping our hand a little bit, you'll see that starts at box three and then jumps to box 11. That's because box one and two have not been fully done yet. Uh, it could be that there were some issues in QA, they have to be redigitized, they're waiting to be indexed, or some of these were in really, really rough shape and need very deep and in intensive cleaning. And so they're, they're in that cycle as well. But you can see through here, all of those boxes that we did digitize, you get a little bit of a thumbnail of what the box looked like as we received it. And then whatever title that she had written on it, including there was no title. So you're gonna have to dive in a little bit more. And then under the subseries, that's how many subdivisions within that box there are. So if we look in the, across uh, the city in Salt Lake to Hawaii Kai, you'll see that these are all of those tabs within the box, Wanalulu Valley, Salt Lake, North King Street, and then how many photographs were in each of those little subdivisions. And then again, you can, you can tab across the bottom and continue to look through that. So let's look at the Kamakapili Church. There are 16 photographs in there. When you open up that folder, now we're at the base level. These are the individual slides themselves. And you can tell because we gave them consecutively numbered slide numbers and you get little thumbnails. So you at least have an idea of what that image looks like. So we'll just open up one of these. And now here we are at the actual slide itself in the lower right corner. If you click that, it will give you a full size image. So you have a little bit greater view of what's going on there. And then down at the bottom here, this is important and, and partially why slides take a little bit longer than some other things. We wanted to make sure that since you don't have the look of the little cardboard sleeve around the slide, that we captured all of the information that was on that little cardboard sleeve so that you have all of the knowledge that you would if you came in and looked at the physical object itself. And so within that, slides themselves almost always have the date, the month and day that they were printed, and then which number that slide was on the roll. So what it was its sequence on that roll of 12, 24, or 36. And then occasionally, Nancy would also write in some additional information about that image, whether she would give some more description or she would number it herself. And since we weren't there when she did it, we don't exactly always know what those handwritten numbers are, but you know, we, we kind of assert that it might've been used in a presentation of hers and the order in which she presented it. So for those of you who really wanna dig into some very deep sleuthing, you can look for those handwritten details and see if you can kind of put together her original piece. But uh, you know, we're very excited about this. We've got all of this information, all of this metadata. As we refine the search interface, you'll be able to dive much deeper into that search and sorting capability. Uh, and again, you know, we welcome you to take a look at this. This is all held in the public trust. So we don't charge anything for this. When Nancy deposited her materials, she did acknowledge the sign off that she was depositing all of her materials into the public trust because she felt it was really important that 
current and future generations could benefit from all of her work and, and the way that she saw the world. And I think that to me is, is one of the greatest gifts that she's given us is the ability to look at her time period through her eyes and, and find those things that she really thought was, was very interesting. Um, so, you know, that's a bit of a quick overview. Again, I encourage you to go search through here. There's, there's some 3000 plus slides that have already been done and organized. We're going to continue to index clean and organize and digitize the slides as we can and, and continue to release them out there. So I, I thank you for this opportunity to, to share some of our joy. And, you know, we, we really miss Clara on the project because as you might've seen in the video, she was a bit of a perfectionist uh, because she understood that, that we get one chance to do this. And if we don't get the finest quality we can right now, then the likelihood of rescanning is, is not gonna happen. And, and one other thing that, that she mentioned in the video that I think is really worth highlighting is we were very scientific about how we capture these images. We used a color target that was calibrated for white balance and also focus. And that was what we started each box with. So we knew that the camera itself was absolutely focused and that we had the white balance right. So if you see an image of hers that is, is really dark or very, very bright, that's because she either underexposed or overexposed the image. We do absolutely no adjustment. We do no despeckling because we don't know if that is, is a speck of dust or maybe it was a bird flying in the background. So we don't wanna use some automated algorithms that may make the image look better and find out it's actually removing detail out of it. So for the general public, we think that this will provide just an immense treasure trove of images. But for those of you who really want to use the image, to blow it up, to print it, uh, to use it in publications, you have the option of what level of, of cleanup and detail that you really want to provide. Do you adjust for her under or overexposing? Do you remove scratches and, and dust and things? We want you to make that determination. We don't want to assume we know what the end use is going to be. So again, overexposed, underexposed, that's because that's how the original was. We don't make any of those adjustments. So again, thank you very much for this opportunity. And, and I look forward to answering some of your questions. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Adam. Um, I hope that was helpful to everyone and encourages you to access the collection on the website. Um, so now um, we'd like to begin our panel discussion. So presenters, welcome back. Um, so the first question is for Don. Um, among the slides you showed us today, which was your favorite and why? I think the one I liked the best was of the uh, Hilton Hawaiian Hotel before the rainbow uh, mural got put on the rainbow tower. I, I was shocked to see that and it's very happy to see that. Uh, it captured a specific moment in time. Uh, so you don't like the rainbow or? Oh, I do. Oh. But I, I found it fun to see without the rainbow. Yeah, yeah. Um, great. Um, Adam, you mentioned crowd. In the film, oh. um, it was mentioned about crowdsourcing. And so what do you mean? What did you mean by that? So yeah, unfortunately, at the time that we, we did the video, we didn't realize that the pandemic was going to drag on quite so much. So as I mentioned, we are about a year behind in where we'd like to be from the user interface. But ultimately, um, where we're going to go with that is each image is going to have a little button that says, I know something I'd like to contribute so that we can have a, a field that says contributed metadata. Because maybe you know the address or you know the time period. Um, you know something about that house or the people in the video or in the image that you'd like to contribute. So where we want to go is ultimately to provide some capability of the public sharing their mana'o about images and records and, and relationships between things that we don't have privy to. And we're not there yet. We, we want to get there desperately, but again, with everything going on, 
we put a premium on getting more items online. So in the interim, if you do find uh, an image that you know something about, you know, please share that reference number and you can email archives at hawaii.gov and say, hey, I know something and here's what I'd like to share. And, and we'll, we'll kind of squirrel those away until we get to that point and then be able to do a, a mass sharing at that point. Fantastic. Um, another question for Adam, what was the method used to clean the slides? So the, the first level method, as you saw in the video, was really just a very fine uh, makeup brush. We wanted to get the dust off. The, the difficulty with the cardboard sleeves and the fact that they came to us fourth hand um, from Nancy to her estate, to HHF, to us, uh, you know, over the, the years they had gotten dusty. And so the cardboard sleeves actually held dust up in between the, the, the outer sleeve and the slide itself. So as it dropped down to get digitized, it would drop more dust into it. For those things that, that tended to be a little stubborn, we used PEC 12, which is an emulsion cleaner used on photography materials to, to use a, a lint-free pad to, to use a little bit more um, cleaning power to, to get some of that dust and dirt off of it. And, and unfortunately, a couple of the boxes that are still missing are, are really quite moldy. And so that's what we were using to uh, clean the slides themselves. Sounds very meticulous. Um, so this is a question for Don. Um, since you've looked at most of, uh, more of the images than we have, um, what period of time do her images cover? Oh, um, they'll date from the early 60s. Um, I know through the 80s, I'm not sure about the 90s, but uh, I know it went at least through the 60s, through the 80s, what I remember. Um, and a question for Robin. Um, how did you conceive of doing this film? And can you please tell us more, um, tell us about the new film you're working on? Yeah, um, I actually became aware of Nancy Bannock doing research at the State Archives on another project um, for Asian American history for PBS. Um, but I wasn't aware of her, her big picture albums and the slides. And so when actually I had a conversation with you, Beth, when you mentioned the slides being preserved, um, you said something like, oh, it would be nice to have a video about that. And I said, oh, I would love to do a video about the slides and the um, images because, um, you know, they're so visual. And I was really curious about Nancy Bannock after looking at some of the folders in the state archives. So I feel so fortunate to have worked on that slide project because even only seeing a third of the slide collection, it, it, was, it was really emotional. Tra uh, travel back in time to work on that video. Uh, by the way, I put a link to the video in the chat. So if people had trouble seeing it or want to see it again, they can see it on Vimeo. Um, and so the other wonderful thing that happened was, um, you know, Nancy was known for preserving Chinatown and Chinatown's near and dear to my heart. And so I um, was fortunate to get a state foundation culture in the arts artist stipend to work on a video specifically about Nancy Bannock's work to preserve Chinatown. And uh, Waters Martin and the Dolores Furtado Martin Foundation came in with some matching funds so that we, we could do a really good job. And we're in the middle of production right now. And I've learned so much about Nancy and how really tireless, Adam used that word in the video, she was so tireless to really save the the built environment that is so important to us who grew up here. And, um, you know, I, I know that there are many, many people who work behind the scenes to make sure that we can appreciate, you know, neighborhoods like Chinatown and make sure that we can see Diamond Head without huge high rises in front of it. So I, I'm growing more and more appreciative of that through this work. And so I'm very thankful to all the funders and all the work, people who work behind the scenes. So that Chinatown documentary will be um, 
screen through the Historic Hawaii Foundation probably sometime in the late summer because it'll be done in June, late June. Oh, that sounds great. I can't wait to see it, Robin. Um, all right, another question for Adam. Um, did Nancy have a particular way of sorting and labeling her slides? I saw the person who wrote it. I saw handwritten slips in the photos of the slides sorted, stored in boxes and wonder if those are her notes. So start with the back end of that. Those were definitely um, her notes. And as I mentioned during my talk, we basically went with what, however she had filed them and gave them to us because we, we can't undo what she did. It wouldn't make sense to us. She put them in a specific order. We don't know if it was geographic or temporal or you know whatever job she was working on at the time. We just took it as we received it and, and went with whatever labeling she had on it. One thing I just wanted to point out is that I looked at the Chinatown albums to uh, recently that are at the state archives. They're beautiful albums with black and white prints in them. And some of the slides are, are duplicate images. The color slides are duplicate images of the black and white prints in those albums. So I know that Nancy must have been carrying around two cameras with her when she was documenting certain places. So I, I really have a lot of admiration for, for her work doing that you know she had to juggle a lot of technical equipment and and she wasn't a by all accounts she wasn't a very you know big person she's a very petite person so yeah that i was very ad you know was very um had a lot of admiration for the work she did definitely um well we're about at the end of our time here today, um, I see a lot of familiar names in the chat um, and it would have been so nice to be able to see everybody, <laughs> um, but someday. So thank you again, Don, Adam and Robin for joining us and being a part of this. And also Stacy Hoshino, shout out to you. I know you're out there. Um, and thank you Art, to our audience for joining us. Um, we encourage you to stay engaged, sign up for our, our e-newsletter um, to stay up to date for you know, our upcoming events and activities. And please consider supporting Historic Hawaii Foundation um, by making a donation, becoming a member and visit our um, join us section on our website, historichawaii.org. Um, so that's about it. Um, mahalo everybody. We wish you good health and stay safe. Thanks for joining us. Aloha. 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 Aloha.